Hello everyone and welcome into the channel. My name is Brent and in today's video we are going to be doing an M1 Finance weekly recap. We're going to go ahead and hit up on five different areas today. Number one, the overall performance of our portfolio, what positions are up, what positions are down overall. Number two, we're going to take a look at the weekly performance. Take a look at how our portfolio did in comparison to the main indexes. Did we overperform, outperform? You know, come in right on the dot. Uh, number three, we're going to go over the activity. We had nearly $100 in dividends roll in this past week. So we're going to go ahead and go over the buys, sells, and dividends that rolled in. Uh, number four, we're going to go ahead and go over the portfolio's current dividend. This is going to be changing uh, in the next week's video because number five is going to go over how I am selling out of a good portion of my portfolio. I feel it's about 10 different holdings. I'm reconstructing my portfolio. So all I'm doing is transitioning from individual holdings that I feel could be stagnating or not performing as best they could and moving those over more towards where I had been structuring my portfolio, such as ETFs, right? So with that said, if you guys are brand new here, definitely go down below, hit the red button to subscribe, make it great if you guys haven't subscribed and give the video a thumbs up. So let's go ahead and get quickly into the video. So really quickly, greed has been the main indicator of the market over the past three weeks now, or well, we hit greed one week ago, but yeah, it, it was greed last week when we had taken a look at it. There was extreme fear I thought in the market a month ago. I mean, this thing was just ticking all the way off the parameter here, but the VIX has came down. That was an interesting article here. Uh, I don't have it up anymore, but the VIX had gone like on average around 30 for quite a while over the past several months, whereas the the, the fear was very high. Uh, just recently, the VIX actually came down under 20. I think it's averaging around 15 to 17 right now. So volatility and fear is out of the market at this moment. Greed has kind of set in the whole FOMO. I hear a lot more people at work these days talking about getting into investing, taking a look at the market. So they're seeing more green out there than what has been out previously. So they're getting a bit more interested in it. So it's kind of interesting just to kind of hear and see what people are kind of discussing outside of YouTube, just kind of normal individuals. Uh, so jumping into number one, the overall performance of our portfolio. We did have a slight uptick. We had been in that 1% or that 50% range for a little bit within our returns. Uh, this return is based off of our market gains and our earned dividends combined for a grand total of over $10,000. So uh, this is, I think I had said that last time, like last week, we're like, hey, we're going to be breaching $10,000 of gains potentially over the next week. And then our earned dividends will soon, probably within the next week, hit $4,500 of so just straight earned dividends. So that'll be a nice little milestone to hit and overcome. This is just going to continue chugging higher and higher. Can't wait to hit $5,000 of earned dividends. That's just insane to kind of think about. You know, essentially we're almost at 6,000. So I almost have another year of Roth IRA contributions that this portfolio has generated over the past five years that this portfolio has been active. And it's all being done within a Roth, Roth IRA. So eventually, over the next 30 years, as this portfolio is added equity into and invested, it'll just continue to compound and compound. And instead, in the future, instead of reinvesting those dividends, have all the dividends you know drop into the account, withdraw them. And because it's a Roth IRA, it'll be completely tax-free. So just kind of an interesting, interesting thing here. Our best performers, uh, Apple, that was still first. Abby was second place. Lockheed Martin was third place. So none of our top tier positions have changed as far as moving higher or lower. Digital Realty Trust actually overtook IIPR for the worst position in the portfolio. Let's do a slow clap there. Uh, so DLR down 62% essentially. IIPR, 58%, Essex Property Tr Trust, nearly down 21%. So these are all REITs, Real Estate Investment Trust. These are all having to do with multifamily or industrial, industrial, you know, 
deposits are low. Money is not flowing as much as it had been in the past. They're really constricting uh, money flow right now. There's different loans that are harder to get. Uh, rates are a lot higher. People are not wanting to take on more debt or they're not wanting to refinance their debt. If they do, it's driving their prices higher, driving their overall um, expense higher and net income lower. So uh, a lot of these REITs are getting beat up here in the short term. Then here at the bottom, we also have Clorox, Hormo, and Colgate. These are a few positions that we're actually going to be removing out of the portfolio, I believe. I think all three of these are going to be gone here shortly. Uh, but we'll go over what holdings we're actually going to be selling off today. Uh, they're mainly just kind of laggers, essentially. Now, number two, let's go into the weekly performance. So overall, we did go up 0.22%. Nothing, nothing big. We had a great week last week. I believe we were up nearly 1% to 2%, whereas the market had been negative. So us to be up this week and, uh, you know, by 0.22 is actually pretty nice. I'm not, uh, you know, discounting that at all. So 102 bucks there. We did have an earned dividend. So we did sit through an ex-dividend. So that should be coming out in the future. JP Morgan blew their earnings out of the water. So up on the week, 8.83%. That is a very nice run up. A lot of individuals out there had been a little bit worried of the financials beginning to announce their earnings and uh, be negative. I believe Wells Fargo also had some positive stuff. We'll take a look at the weekly S&P performance and that'll include a lot of the financials and other companies out there in the market. But I know financials started off, you know, Wells Fargo, Citibank, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs and stuff started off this week with earnings. Starbucks up 2.67, Merck, Lowe's. So all of these very nicely up over 1% waste management. Down towards the bottom, we have Cisco down 4.91%. That's a big move to the downside for Cisco, nearly 5% on a weekly basis. That's a pretty big move. WP Carry, Realty Income, IIPR, Formo, ABM, Cisco, a few others out there, right? There's quite a bit of red out there. Uh, so despite all the red, it was like almost 50-50. That's why we essentially stayed flat, up 0.22%. So how did we do in comparison to the main indexes? Well, the S&P 500 put on a 0.79% return. Huge uptick on Thursday. I believe, what was it, CPI numbers came out. But I know essentially it had came out and it was looked at as positive, right? It had been looked at as positive, but it marinated for a while, sat, and then Friday, it, the market started higher. It just started selling off. Then we had that little double dip and it started to recover. So interesting, interesting, interesting. Uh, the, the, the market's really surprising me. You know, S&P 500 over the past one month is up 4.5%. That's a huge run up out of these low 3800s to now 4137. So I'm really surprised to see that this market is moving higher and higher. Uh, I had honestly expected it to pull back, at least retouch that 50 day before using, you know, using as support and then continuing higher. But this has just blown past it and continues to move higher and higher. But, you know, greed could be playing uh, you know, good percentage towards that. So here today, it is up 777, lucky number sevens. The Dow Jones put on a whopping 1.2%. NASDAQ here up 0.29% on the week, but they're up here today by 16%. So uh, them being up 0.3% on the week is actually fairly good. They did have a huge sell-off Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. A little bit of fear out there. I did see a lot of videos being posted out on upcoming earnings for a lot of tech companies, but NASDAQ overall positive there on the week. Russell 2000, not an index a lot of investors talk about just because it's one of the smaller mid cap indexes, up 1.52% on the week. So overall on a weekly basis, we did okay. We came in in line because last week we had a very positive week. So I am happy with the, the movement here. And we'll take a look really quickly at the one week performance. So as we said earlier in the video, 
Uh, financials did really well this week. You can see Bank of America up 6%, JP Morgan nearly 9%, Wells Fargo 4.59%, Citigroup 807 Visa, MasterCard, all up over 3%, along with some of those other credit services such as PayPal. And MasterCard looks like it's tossed in there. Berkshire Hathaway up 2.31. So, yeah, very interesting move in the financials. You can see the rest of the market just kind of not red, not green, just kind of mixed. So, really nice. Okay, so I, I was going to cover this earlier for the financials. Well, covered it right now really quickly. So number three, the activity of the week. One thing really quickly, we have $95.47 of buying power. And this is all because of these dividends that just rolled in between the 10th and the 14th. So starting off on Monday, we had Merck in out $16.79, followed up behind by Main Street Capital, Essex Property Trust, a whopping $18.21, IIPR, you know, despite them being down 50% in the portfolio, they're putting out some good dividends so to just getting beat the heck up. IIPR, 20 bucks, 1988, 17 cents there, realty income, seven bucks. And the whopper here, WB carry, a whopping 24.64. So really nice dividends coming out through here. So a grand total of $95.47, making up that total value there of $95.47. So we do have auto invest turned on right here, which that little slide bar right there, so you can see right here, we do have one buy coming up in the future. And we'll talk more about that here as we go into selling and retargeting our portfolio in number five. Uh, number four, our current portfolio dividend income. For this, I do use the website trackyourdividends.com. This allows me to go in and add individual holdings into my portfolio that I am holding within the M1 Finance platform. It clearly tells me the yield of 2.95, my yield on cost of 3.25, my annual income of 1367, and my portfolio beta in comparison to just the general market. Uh, the S&P 500 has a portfolio beta of one, and my portfolio is slightly lower, meaning that it just the volatility isn't as high as the S&P, but at the same time, the performance couldn't be as slushy sloshy. Like it might not have the biggest downsides, but it also may not have the biggest upsides. It just kind of smooth sailing. So that is our number four. Uh, we haven't bought anything that needs to be updated. If we look at our holdings here, this is 46,294. 46.294, so everything is up to date as of now. So number five, we are going to be selling and reinvesting all of our equity back into our portfolio today. Uh, there's quite a bit of holdings that we're gonna be liquidating and just moving that capital into our into the ETF that we're gonna be primary um, focusing on. So of these holdings, I am going to be liquidating out of ABM Industries, Colgate, Lorox, Cisco, Ormo Foods, Johnson & Johnson, JP Morgan, Merck, Pfizer, Cisco, and WP Carey. So these are all positions that I'm going to be liquidating, liquidating out of and moving into SHD. I do have, um, I went ahead and put this thing together. I, I went ahead and made a, this is gonna be a favorite. This is gonna be like a shortcut of mine. So in the future, I'm gonna to have today's date for 1623. And as this progresses in the future, I will be able to go back and be like, oh, uh, because I sold out of ABM today and I moved it into Schwab, how has the performance been between both of them going forward? And I believe that uh, these positions down here, they're kind of laggers. Their financials are beginning to lag behind. The, that has affected their performance overall. Being individual holdings, they have a lot more risk with them. And while JP Morgan did great this past week, I kind of want to be out of some of the financials here going forward. So uh, while Schwab or uh, the SHD fund may have it in there, it'll just be more diverse. I believe there's about 105 uh, individual holdings within that ETF. So 
we're just being we're just moving from less diversity with some lagging financial metrics or really good financial metrics, but just kind of the same performance wise with less risk. Uh, I am still going to continue to have, you can see here on the list, there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. So there are 11 holdings. I do have 25 holdings in my portfolio. You'll notice that Starbucks, Waste Management, Apple, Lowe's, Siggy, Lockheed Martin. Let's see what else. Realty Income, Essex Property Trust, Main Street. Uh, I'm also keeping some of the ones that are heavy losses, so I'm not going to be selling at a DLR or IIPR. Those are going to be staying in the portfolio. I'm also keeping AVI, despite it being up, you know, it's at all time highs. I believe near all time highs, maybe not at all time highs. I know a few positions in here that I am liquidating are at all-time highs. Merck, we are taking profits right now. It is at an all-time high. It does actually outperform, I believe. Yeah, it does outperform the SEHD. But hey, we're just kind of consolidating. Uh, you can see here we did sell out of Johnson & Johnson. We sold out of Pfizer. And we're also selling out of Merck. So Merck is one of those positions we're just kind of selling off at an all-time high. It could just be more risky to the downside. And we're just diversifying off our portfolio a bit. Pfizer here, that one got beat up here recently. Syscorp, underperformed, lagged out, and DipBC. So yeah, those are the positions that we're kind of removing from our portfolio. So I'm gonna go ahead, drag this one off my screen. Now jumping back over the M1 Finance, we're gonna go into our portfolio tab. We are going to go ahead and start off with number one, which is ABM Industries. Oh no, to do this, it's been such a long time since I've removed a lot of holdings out of my portfolio. So this is what we're going to do. We're gonna click edit. We are going to go ahead and locate ABM. We're gonna go ahead and select it. And we're gonna go ahead and go down the list. City, uh, I think Clorox is on my list as well. So yeah, Clorox. I'm going to go ahead and check them off on my list on, on my other screen here. We've got Colgate. We have Cisco. Cisco right there. Ormo Foods, HRL. And then we have J&J, &J, Johnson & Johnson. So all we're going through right now is just going through the portfolio and selecting the holdings here, MRK in the portfolio, once we have all of these selected, we can go ahead and delete them out of the portfolio. And then we'll do a quick snapshot of what is left. So there we go. We have everything selected that we want to sell. At this point, we hit delete. Boom. So we need to add 11% to our portfolio. So this will just get bumped up to 87% to make it a total of 100. So you can see what's left in the portfolio here. We have Avi, Lockheed, Apple, Avery, Lowe's, Main Street, Realty, Siggy, Starbucks, Waste. And then these positions are all negative right now. So I don't think that they will overperform the market. I held on to these positions up here, just right here, because I feel that these positions, Lockheed, Apple, Lowe's, Siggy, Starbucks, these positions are more like kind of golden positions where I believe they have great financials, they can help overperform the market. So by having them in my portfolio, I like the companies, I like what products and services they offer. I feel like their financials are intact at this moment going forward. So I'm gonna to continue to hold them. And these ones are just kind of beat up in the portfolio. I'm not, I'm not going to take the loss right now. I'm just kind of, I'm not going to sell and lock in that loss. So I'm going to go ahead and hold it over time. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> we'll make it, we'll make a, uh, we'll use my, what's it called? My chart to kind of show what the guys' performance will be as of today's date going forward in comparison to where I'm moving the equity from the other positions. So at this point, I just go ahead and hit continue. And it says, hey, are you really wanting to remove all these positions? 
And I hit yes and confirm that. And now we'll see down here that it's gonna retarget everything. It's gonna say that I have 11 cells and it's gonna be retargeting all of the equity, all of it into one buy. So if you click on the details right here, it's about to buy $20,000 of SCHD. Should I hold off on buying it? Should I wait? It doesn't matter at this moment, right? I'm already invested in all of these. I It won't make any difference whether I hold off on investing in it or do it on a weekly basis, monthly basis. You know, I may miss out on performance in the market. It's not going to affect me positive or negative in a long term to do this move. So I'm just going to go ahead and just let $20,000 of it sell out and move all into SEHD on the next trading day. So that is going to take place on Monday. Essentially, we're selling off half of our portfolio and we're keeping the other half in individual holdings. So this will be a nice little um, move for the portfolio to kind of remove some individual risk and laggers that could potentially have a much harder time if we move into a recession in the future where they may not be at their best to go through what could be, you know, what they will have to go through in the future. So that is going to be it for this video. We went ahead and hit up on those five areas. Number one, the overall performance. Number two, the weekly performance in comparison to the indexes. Number three, the activity, all those dividends that rolled in. Number four, the current dividend income. That is all going to get updated next week as we move out of 11 holdings and move $20,000 over into SEHD. As SEHD does have SEHD, a 3.59% starting yield at this moment, whereas many of the positions that I sold, such as Cisco, are like 2.67, or uh, let's see, Mark 2.53, JP Morgan 2.88. So we are selling out of lesser, either similar or underperforming companies with a lesser yield to a ETF that is broader, has less risk, has a higher yield, and has performed better. And uh, yeah, that's what we're going to be doing. So let me know down in the comment section below what are you guys doing with your guys' portfolios? Are you staying invested how has your performance been are you invested in individual companies are you invested in etfs do you have a mixture or have been going to a mixture or like how are you set on your ways right now let me know down in the comment section below i would really like to hear from you guys and that is going to be it for me i hope everyone has a great day i will see you guys in the next video and have a good one Bye bye